Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about Chapter 21, which is your lymphatic system. Lymphatic system and immunity cover are covered in Chapters 21 and 22. 21 covers all of the lymphatic organs, and we'll talk about the basic functions of the lymphatic system. And then 22 covers the immune system, which resides within our lymphatic system and is composed of specific cells that... Um, provide us with immunity. So before we start, I always like to talk about the fact that we are composed of billions and billions and billions of cells, right? So here we have human cells. Human cells make up, um, or are, we have about 10 trillion human cells that make up our body. But if you look at all the bacteria that live in, in and on us, we have even more bacteria, thousands of times more bacteria than we do normal human cells. And this is important because our immune system fights off those non-self cells. Bacterial cells are non-self. But most of, these ba most of these bacteria live in and on us in a symbiotic relationship, a mutualistic symbiosis where they are giving us protection and we are gaining um, protection from them. And then they get a place to survive and they get nutrients from us. So we both give and produce this symbiosis. Sometimes, though, pathogens do get in and cause disease. And that's what our immune system fights against. So our immune system itself is not an organ system, but a population of specific cells that fight against um, non-self cells. And the immune system cells are found within our lymphatic organs. So they're produced by lymphatic organs. Red bone marrow and the thymus are what help to produce and maturate our immune system cells, and then they move to um, some region of our body that has an aggregation of lymphatic tissue, like lymphatic nodes, or the spleen, or our tonsils, or Peyer's patches, and then they sit there and wait for potential pathogens to come along, and then once they recognize a foreign invader, they attack. The lymphatic system, though, has other functions. Not, it's not just there to um, provide our immune system cells a place to reside. It also functions in um, moving fluid that's trapped in our body tissues. So as fluid moves from our blood to our tissues, and then back to our blood, some fluid always remains behind. That little bit of fluid that remains behind is um, picked up by our lymphatic vessels. The lymphatic vessels pick it up and then they move it to our, or back to our, our blood vessels. And this keeps us from having swelling in our tissues. <clears throat> so here we have different um, lymphatic vessels. So down here you can see um, lymphatic capillaries have these little um, kind of flaps where tissue can push and the fluid can move in. And once the fluid moves in, it can't move back out. And then we have these little valves, kind of like blood vessels have, like veins have. And fluid can move in different directions, but they can't go through those valves unless, oh, sorry, unless those valves are opened. On this side, we have all the different organs and um, structures of the lymphatic system. So the thymus and the red bone marrow, those are the two primary lymphatic organs. Um, other structures, we have the spleen, our lymph nodes, tonsils, and um, malt, which is mucosa-associated lymphatic tissue. 
Um, the malt we typically talk about, I talk a lot more about Pierre's patches, which are found in the GI tract, um, because we have a, a huge amount of malt in that region. So what is lymph? Lymph has similar components to your interstitial fluid. Um, as fluid leaves the blood and then starts to return back to the blood, some is always left behind. That, to, that fluid that was left behind becomes the lymph. It moves into lymphatic capillaries and becomes lymph. So it's made up of the same materials that our interstitial tissue or our interstitial fluid and our um, blood plasma really have. It has water as the main component. It has dissolved solutes. It has some proteins, not a lot. Um, it can have pathogens if there's some type of an infection um, that will be found there. And that's what our lymphatic organs are going to um, provide a site for if there is a pathogen, our lymphatic organs, when the lymph moves through them, will detect that, or the cells inside will detect and will attack. So lymphatic ca capillaries are your smallest capillaries. They're directly associated with blood capillaries. Um, they do not have uh, the basement membrane and they work by having these little flaps. I'm going to go to the next slide so you can see it, okay? So they have these little flaps right here you can see. So as fluid remains in the interstitial regions around the tissues, the fluid is going to build up and it causes pressure on the walls, which causes the um, openings. And so fluid moves in, but once pressure builds up inside the capillaries, these doors are going to close and they can't open back up. So this is going to drain into your um, lymphatic vessels. And so here's a vessel. So fluid moves in. It's going to move in one direction um, towards the lymphatic vessels. And um, the vessels have valves just like our blood vessels, our veins do. And so these vessels um, require the skeletal muscle pump, the respiratory pump, as well as the arteries that are right there to help move the fluid back towards the um, subclavian veins. We have multiple trunks, so lymphatic vessels drain into lymphatic trunks. Um, these different trunks are going to drain different regions of our body. I don't tend to ask questions about each of the individual trunks, so don't worry about that as much. But we do need to know the lymphatic ducts. We do have a right lymphatic duct and a thoracic duct. The right lymphatic duct drains the upper right side of the body. So it drains the right head, the neck, the right upper limb and the right thorax. So you can see it right here. Um, the thoracic duct then drains the rest of the body. Kind of seems unfair is how it drains, but it doesn't matter. Um, both of these drain the fluid back in to our heart. This is a video. I'm not going to go over it with you. I will show you how to work it. Hold on, it will pop up. So it's a nine minute video. It's a nine minute video. And I expect that you're going to go through this. And I'm going to actually look for an assignment to go with this to make you do an assignment associated with this um, video. And that way I know you've done it. So aren't it sweetie? I know. Um, it's a good video. It'll talk about um, the flow of lymph and everything. Okay, so I can show you. you can see all the different things. Return um, with these different mechanisms. Also, how is lymph formed? How is um, the lymphatic system function and disease resistance? So it's a really good overview of the lymphatic system. 
So I do expect that you will watch this video on your own and go through it and answer the questions, okay? So one of the things that I talk about in, um, well, in a lot of chapters actually, is cancer. And cancer is the inability or uncontrollable cell growth. And usually these cells are not um, normal cells. So they are mutated cells that don't function properly. If cancer cells move from one site to another site, this is called metastasis. And that can lead to um, secondary and tertiary cancer types. Um, and also, when you have cancer spreading, it can cause um, your cancer to become a lot more dangerous. And cancer offers, often spreads through the lymphatic system. Lymphedema occurs when the lymphatic system can't um, pick up the excess drainage. So if there's something wrong with the lymphatic vessels, you can't drain the fluid. It can cause severe um, damage to the tissues. It can cause um, pain associated with the um, swelling. Sorry, I have a little bit of a cold, so. And I'm on the lymphatic system. It's perfect, right? Um, so anyways, the, um, if the, this can occur if there's damage to the vessels, if something happens, um, if the vessels have been removed because of some surgery or something, um, but it also can occur because of infections, like um, elephantiasis is associated with a specific type of filarial worm that causes damage to those vessels. So um, here's a question that you should be able to answer. How does fluid enter lymphatic capillaries and what prevents its escape? which lymphatic duct receives lymph from the right leg. So if we're looking at the right leg, um, would it be the right lymphatic duct or would it be the thoracic duct? Um, you should be able to answer both of these questions at this point. So let's look at the different lymphatic structures. Actually, you know what? It's already at almost the 13 minute mark and this only goes for 15. So how about we quit it right now? Quit it. This sounds a weird way to say it, but how about we stop the video now, and then I'll restart with a new video. You have a wonderful day, and I will chat with you in a little bit. Bye.